Welcome to the Our League app and it's another chance to get out in to the championship community and it's another getting to know and tonight we're here at the Batley Bulldogs getting to know the one and only James Brown, the enforcer, the bad man, but now the vice captain. Have you turned over a new leaf, Brown? Is that is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, trying to channel my anger into a better place, really. <laughs> you've had um, you've had an interesting career, and a lot of people won't know. Let's start off field for a start because you're a full time builder. You've got your own firm with your dad. Um, how hard is it? to be a full-time builder, obviously a physical job, and then what some people perceive to be a part-time rugby player, but really it's not a part-time job, rugby at this level. Yeah, it's quite tough, especially, you know, you get up in the morning, it's dark, and then obviously you finish, <clears throat> because I live in Leeds, so there's no point in me going back home to come right across to the other side of Leeds, so I take my training stuff to work, I come straight to training, and we'll get home in pre-season, it will like half past nine. So just give us, just, just humour us, give us a typical day, if you're on a site, just break it down from, you're waking up at what must be, what, 6 a.m., half five? Yeah. So I wake up about, I don't know, yeah, like you say, six o'clock, um, have my breakfast and stuff, get ready to go to work, and then I could be doing out from laying a floor to putting a roof on, to digging holes, just uh, any sort of building work, really. I'm a joiner by trade, but, you know, when you've got your own company, you've got to do bits and bats of everything. And you work with your old man, is that challenging? Is it your... that's, that's, that's the hardest thing about it. <laughs> is it is, he's, he's one of them guys, he's got the biggest hands in the world. He's a tough old school uh, rugby. Did he play himself? Yeah, but on a, on a amateur level, yeah. And um, you, you now work full time, so you've been at work all day. Um, is, is, is there any time you just think to yourself, oh, I, just, I can't be bothered with this, or have you still got that burning pack? What, what gets you here? Um... I don't know, all the lads and, you know, you're a team and you want to work hard for each other and stuff like that. So you don't want to let them down really more than not. Um, and obviously you get paid, so it's a, it's a job, isn't it? It is, you're correct. And I think we've, I've known you for a long time. And uh, I remember when you were a young kid coming through, loads of promise, everyone was talking about you, all the skills. Um, and you went on trial over to Wigan when Mickey Mack, went, you went in the same amateur team as Mickey Mack. What were Mickey Mack like as a kid? <laughs> Daft. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he could tell Mick, obviously, he's, he was talented and he's tough and what have you. Um, he could tell he was going to go places and he chose to go to Wigan and get away from his, you know, the draws of friends and stuff like that. Um, so he went over there and I think, looking back, the best thing he could have done. He has, he's had a grant to have a great career. You left Wigan, um, didn't work out for you over there, and you no. came back and you played amateur. So you played for the Queen's team, the notorious Queen's team. And it's as a Milford lad, we hated the Queen's. And I remember making my first team debut down at Buzzvale against Queen's, getting run straight up by Martin Richardson. And you played with Martin and, and Craig Wright. Uh, there you go. <laughs> this goes getting a lot of bonus. Um, you played with some, some real... Hard men, some proper hard men. And we're not talking about the professionals, what they call hard men. That, that Queen's team were were well known, national coach champions, and uh, real tough competitors. Yeah, feared, feared. Yeah, there were some. Yeah, they were feared. Yeah, um, but I suppose you, you know, that's where I've been brought up as from a being a baby. So it were just like a second nature. I mean, you know, I didn't look at them in any different light to look at any other person. But what I'm saying is, at 16 year old, you're playing first team at Queen's. It's, that's a that's a tough start to a career. And you didn't start, how old were you when you, you first got your first professional gig? Uh, I think I was 25. 25, so how did that, how did that actually come about? Well, uh, there were a couple of teams asking, you know, um, you know, if I fancied it, and I was like, not really, no, because I play with my friends and stuff like that, Queens, we're doing <clears throat> really well, won National Cup a couple of times, so... And then people started drifting away, you know, people had families and whatnot. I had a little girl in Swinton come in and says, um, do you fancy coming over on, you know, like a bit of a page of play basis? So I says, yeah, I'll give it a pop for, you know, extra money. I'll do, you know, do as good when I just had a little girl. So I went over and they never looked back, really. And you went from Swinton over to Batley and you've been here now five years. Do you think you've changed as a person? Um, uh, a club under the likes of John Keir and now Matt Diskin. What have you learned as a player and a person? I think I learned to be a bit more professional about, you know, the game and stuff like that and how I conduct myself around the game. Um, obviously, you, you pick up your new skills and you, 
improve on what you already had. Talk to us about this season because this season so far hasn't been the greatest start to life. Um, what's happened? Uh, obviously, Disco's bought a new culture in all last season and you've been made vice-captain. Must, that must have been a real proud moment for you. Yeah, well, it was lovely. It was a great feeling when Disco rung and says, um, <clears throat> we have a meeting and he says, you know, you're going to be vice-captain this year. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice. And from that, uh, you start the season positively buoyant and it's been a tough start. What do you put it down to the start? Do you think teams this year in the Championship have improved a lot? Yeah, without a doubt, the, you know, if you look at look throughout the, the fixtures, there's no easy game. But I think we've got we've got a new team together. I know you play friendlies, but friendlies you don't get much out of <clears throat> other than match fitness. You don't really, I don't know, establish a partnership with your new players and stuff like that. I mean, we've had quite a lot of changes from the squad last year to this year. So I think we're starting to gel now. Um, you know, we were a bit upset about Barrow. we against, up against a good Fev team. And then again, against Halifax, we started the first half, we were rubbish. And then the second half, they didn't score another try. It were a game of two halves. And when it, when I saw the score at half-time last weekend, 18-0 at half-time, Disco must have lost his mind at half-time. Yeah, he did. He called us a lot, a lot of bad stuff. Like, but <laughs> I mean, Halifax scored two tries off kicks and an interception. So defensively, we were good. And to come back, that must have given you some real heart as well because uh, the comeback in itself just shows you have got a quality side out there. There is some real quality amongst the ranks and that must give you massive promise heading into this weekend with Rochdale on it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, We know what we're capable of and we know the talent that we've got as a squad. Um, we just need to keep plugging away and doing the right things. Who do you think, if you could give us some names, because a lot of people have been catching up right here on the Hour League app, and there should be some, some great content on there. But for people who don't know Batley, why should they come down to, to a game and experience it here at the Foxes Biscuit Stadium? Um, I think Batley is a club, it's a real family oriented club. It's, you know, it's got a lot of morals about being close to each other and bringing people together and stuff like that. They do a lot of work in community and stuff. I mean, it's, it's important in a, a place like Batley. It's, a lot of different races and colours and breeds and whatever. Um, when they try to bring everyone together, you know, there's no discrimination or anything like that around here. On the field, there's some real talent. Talk to us about some of the new players you've got this year and who to look out for. We've got a couple of new big lads, big front rowers, um, Joe Tierra and Tyler Dickinson, Toby Everett. They've all come and they've all shown. You know, they've added a bit of size to the pack, a bit of aggression, and they're going really well, yeah. Tyler Dickinson, I saw him last year, obviously playing up at Workington Town on Jewel Red from Huddersfield, and he is he's, he's massive. Yeah, he's a big old lad. <laughs> is he the strongest here now at the club? Uh, no, I think Joe Tahir will take a bit Joe of beating. Yeah, wow. He must be strong because the Tyler's massive. Yeah. Um, off field, what makes you tick, mate? What do you like to do away from rugby league? What what was you? Because obviously rugby league might not have been your first love, but what were your first love? Because mine were house music back in the day. What did you love as a kid? It was rugby. Rugby. Yeah. Rugby, rugby, rugby. Rugby, rugby, rugby. Yeah. Yes, that went far and never looked back. Four year old. Yeah. And uh, what players inspired you? If, if you were like fanboying, who would you see in the street and go, "Oh, I need their autograph." Uh, Marley, Farrell, yeah, Andy Farrell. Um, and school fop, like school fop, because they were tough and they were classy. Tough and classy, I love it. So what I'm going to ask you to do now, Browner, you've, you've told us about the plays, but we've been asking everyone, can you describe yourself in three words? <laughs> Daft. <laughs> Loud. And friendly. That's, that's, that's three good ones. That's three good ones, I'll give you that. Last but not least, mate, we ask everyone for a bit of a prediction. You've played a few teams now. You've seen the teams around the league as well. Um, who do you think is going to finish in the top five? You can stick yourself in there if you're confident. Stick Batley in fifth or fourth, however you think. But which teams do you think will be up there in the top five this year? In no particular order, I'd say Toronto, Toulouse, Widnes, Feverston and us. There he goes, yes. Got to keep it real. Yeah. There's some good sides. Lee, Halifax, the good sides. Are you impressed with anyone in particular so far? What about Sheffield? Obviously, you've lost a few players over there. Yeah, Sheffield have signed some good players. Um, they signed a good few from our place as well. 
But yeah, they're going really well through from three, so it's only start season though, so we'll see. I think you've got to go. The boys are filing in behind us uh, for a bit of video review. Yeah. Mate, good luck this weekend at Rochdale. You're going to get the win this weekend? We'll get the win this weekend. Get the win this weekend. That's done. Keep watching on the Owl League app for big games this weekend coming up and obviously more getting to know out with the Championship and League One. <laughs>